Welcome to the third plenary session of the 63rd Labor Economics Conference, which is the Abhijit Sen Memorial Lecture. An eminent economist, teacher, and policymaker, a former Planning Commission member, and one of the country's foremost experts on the rural economy, Professor Abhijit Sen passed away at 72 in New Delhi on 29th August 2022. A PhD from Cambridge University, Professor Sen taught and worked in several universities and institutions. In a career spanning more than four decades, Professor Sen taught economics at New Delhi's Jawaharlal Nehru University and held several important government positions, including the chair of the Commission of Agricultural Costs and Prices. He has been former conference president of Indian Society of Labor Economics and played an important role in strengthening in act its activities. This memorial lecture is being organized in his memory to honor and celebrate his academic contributions. And we are truly very privileged that this lecture is being delivered by Professor Ramesh Chand, member of Niti Aayog, which, is, which would definitely be a befitting tribute to his contributions. I request Professor Ramesh Chand, member Niti Aayog, to please grace the dais. The lecture is being chaired by Professor Sudhito Mandal. He's chairman of the Center for Development Studies, Thiru Vananthapuram. I request you, sir, to please grace the dais. Professor Sudhito Mandal is a well-known economist of the country and is currently the chairman of Center for Development Studies, Thiru Vananthapuram. Formerly, he was an emeritus professor at the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy, New Delhi. He was a member of the 14th Finance Commission, the erstwhile Monetary Policy Advisory Committee of the RBI and the National Statistical Commission, where he also acted as chairman. He spent much of his career at the Asian Development Bank, Man Manila, from where he retired as director in the Strategy and Policy Department. His current research interests include development economics, fiscal and monetary policy, macroeconomic modeling, and governance. He has published several books and papers. He also writes a regular column for the financial newspaper Mint and occasionally in other newspapers. We are very privileged that you are chairing this lecture, sir. Before we formally hand over the reins of this session in your hands, I request the organizing secretary of the conference, Professor Vandana Upadhyay. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the first uh, professional event uh, of this evening. As was expected this morning, we would have a, a very interesting and productive day in this, uh, in this conference of the Indian Institute of Labor Economics, which has been organized in a wonderful way in a very uh, challenging situation, but the university and the staff of the department and the students have really lived up to this. All of us are visiting are absolutely thrilled with the way we have been received and with the hospitality. It's been a very, very productive day uh, from the morning. Uh, the keynote addresses and the technical session which we just completed have been very interesting, exciting. I'm sure it will be the same uh, going ahead. Uh, today's last event is this uh, uh, special address in memory of uh, Professor Sen. By Professor Mahesh Chand. I do want to say that, you know, we thought that we are coming out of this, uh, of a very dark period, and indeed that is true in many ways. Uh, but for ISLE, this has also been, in a sense, a very sad period. In the past few months, we have lost three of the pioneers and close friends of this association. Professor Abhijit Sen, then we lost Professor Alag a few months ago. And just a few weeks ago, our dear friend uh, Ashok, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Ajit Ghosh, uh, who uh, uh, was mentioned this morning by Ashwini. And uh, it's been a very, very shocking period for us. So I'm very happy that we have been able to organize this uh, memorial lecture. And while Abhijit was worked in many fields, a very brilliant scholar and a great administrator. Certainly agriculture was his first love, and there's no question about it. In fact, in, as a member of the erstwhile planning commission, one of the charges he had was agriculture. And in its successor organization, the Niti Aayog, now Professor Ramesh Chand has taken over from that role, so nobody could be more appropriate than him, Professor Ramesh who is one of our most eminent agricultural economists. So I now invite Professor Ramesh Chand to deliver the Abhijit Memorial Lecture. 
Thank you, Dr. Sudipto Mandalji. I am grateful to Office Bureau of Members of and Members of Indian Society of Labor Economics for inviting me to deliver the first Professor Abhijit Sen Memorial uh, Lecture in your annual conference. I consider it a, as an uh, honor uh, because of several reasons, because of eminence of uh, uh, Professor Sen, and also I feel uh, when I'm standing here, in some sense, I'm reaping my debt to Professor Sen. He was the person who uh, involved me in um, activities of uh, the then uh, Planning Commission. In, um, I chaired uh, two working groups during the uh, tenure of uh, Professor Sen. I was also a member of a steering committee on agriculture, which was chaired by uh, Dr. Hanwantha Rao, Professor Bedyanathan was a member, Bias Saab was a member, Sen Saab was a member, and I was also a member. And uh, I was given the responsibility of uh, drafting uh, that uh, report. And I uh, acknowledge that uh, if I could succeed Professor Sen in Niti Aayog, a very important factor has been that I was involved in the work of planning commission by Professor Sen. So really, uh, I feel uh, uh, it is an honor to speak, uh, uh, to deliver the first lecture uh, in the memory of such a uh, great uh, person. I am also impressed by the uh, interest among the delegate uh, in this uh, lecture. And I think what I said about uh, Indian Society of Labor Economics in the morning, uh, there is evident proof of this, that uh, it has been a long day. Different people are staying at different places. But still, I find that uh, 70 to 80 percent delegates are still uh, present in the hall uh, for this uh, lecture. Professor Sen was very committed to equity aspect of economic growth and development and welfare of low income classes. This is evident from his writings, public discourses, as well as various actions he undertook and supported as a member of head of policy making bodies like CACP, Planning Commission and 14th Finance Commission of India. I had the opportunity to work with Professor Sen in some high level committees and in preparation of important reports for Planning Commission. He had deep insights into pragmatic aspects of government initiatives and their direct and indirect impact on welfare of masses. I feel employment and its nature are a very strong instrument for shaping development, progress, and welfare of population, especially of poor. There are also strong class, gender, and occupation dimensions related to employment which in turn determines well-being and benefits resulting from employment. In this background, I have chosen the title Changes in Labor Force and Employment for my lecture as I feel this topic is very intimately connected with the goals of economic policies which were very dear to Professor Abhijit Sen. Because of its importance, the theme of employment has received a lot of attention for a long time, and almost all eminent economists of India have written on some aspects of employment from time to time. Some of those contributions have been unique and I think specific to developing countries like India and are very useful in explaining pattern of employment. I reproduce a few of the conclusions from their work, which I feel is useful in understanding some of the ongoing trends and pattern in employment. These are as follows. One, poor cannot afford to be unemployed. 
the definition of <laughs> the concept of working poor. Underemployment is more serious problem in India than unemployment. Third, there is U-shaped relationship between work parties, special rate of women, and per capita income or uh, level of economic development. Fourth, when income of a household improves, the first thing they do is to withdraw their women from farm work. So these are the conclusion which uh, I am just uh, summarizing from the rich literature uh, uh, available uh, on this theme, work of Dr. Hanuman Tharao, Dr. Bedyanathan, and many, uh, many, uh, many others. The biggest issue, uh, if we have to write uh, or talk about employment, is the availability of data and representativeness of data. I mentioned it uh, yesterday during uh, discussion on the um, draft report on um, uh, employment. Uh, I will not uh, repeat that. Many of you were uh, there. But briefly, I want to mention that till 11, 12, we have employment and unemployment data and different censuses. So these were the two sources to study uh, employment. After that, of course, after 11, we could not uh, hold census. 2021 happened to be a COVID year. Still, that uh, census could not be uh, held. So the census data to see what is happening to employment in the last decade is not with us. Then we uh, started a new set of data, that is uh, PLFS data, Periodic uh, Labor Force uh, Survey data. That is now available from 20178 to 2021 uh, for the four consecutive years. So I am happy that despite COVID, there is no, no disruption in this uh, PLFS data, while in uh, many other data, we found that uh, there was a uh, disruption. Friends, I have looked at this data uh, uh, objectively, but what I want to mention in the beginning itself, that the trends which emerge from this four years data are totally opposite in many respects compared to what is the trend which you observe if you compare 11-12 data with 4-5, or if you compare 11-12 data with 17-18. Just I give one example that, uh, that if you compare 11-12 with 17-18 or 4-5 with 11-12, you see a very big withdrawal by, by uh, female labor, both in the cultivator household and also in the agriculture labor household. So they were withdrawing from uh, agriculture work, and since that work is the dominant activity, in overall work also you found that women were withdrawing from work. But, and that was interpreted by many experts as a, as a adverse development for women, that if they are not having work, uh, uh, obviously they uh, do not have uh, decision-making power and many other things, dignities. But after 1718, opposite of that has happened. There is rather much bigger increase in the work participation, labor force participation of women uh, uh, compared to uh, what was the uh, decline uh, between, say, 11, 12, and uh, 17, uh, 18. So I, if I take this position that withdrawal of women from work is adverse for women, then it is very difficult for me to take this position that increase in work participation of women is also adverse for women. But some people have been taking this position that both withdrawal from work and also entry into work, both are adverse for the women. So I will uh, urge you that uh, we have now four years data. Out of these four years, two were COVID years. Very soon we will have uh, data for 202122 also, which will be a normal kind of years. I think that will tell us the true picture of what is happening to employment. When we will compare 1718, 
18, 19, and 21, 22 data sends the COVID uh, kind of data. COVID period data important uh, for many other reasons, but to just see uh, in the normal course of economic activity, what direction uh, WPR, by gender, rural urban, unemployment, uh, occupational categories will take. That I think when we have data for 2021-22, only then we will be able to get the uh, true uh, picture. Uh, <coughs> um, uh, uh, I repeat it, in my address today, I will present to you country level scenario of changes in employment and workforce using the PLFS data for four years for rural, urban and total employment, male, female, with specific focus on female laborers. As a policy person, I have examined four major questions are related to employment. The first question is, is there a decline in work to population ratio in the recent four years? Second, is unemployment in the country rising as asserted by some experts and media repeatedly? Third, are women withdrawing from workforce? And fourth, is there deterioration in the overall employment scenario of the country? I first come to the labor force uh, participation, uh, uh, participation uh, rate. PLFS data show that size of labor force in the country has shown increase in each year since 2017-18 based on both usual status as well as current weekly status. Usual status criterion show increase in size of labor force in India from 485 million during 2017-18 to 563 million during 2021, implying that there is an increase of 16% in the labor force participation in India in three years. This is much higher than what is the population growth. The increase was witnessed across male and female population as well as rural and urban households. The increase has been much higher in rural areas as compared to urban area and much higher in case of female compared to male labor. At the aggregate level, the rural labor force now constitutes 70.7 percent of total labor force. Uh, till 2019 uh, 20 and 73% during 202021. It is interesting to point out that during the COVID year of 202021, size of labor force in rural areas increased by 8%, whereas it shrunk by 3% in urban area. The reason is obvious that migration of labor force from urban area to rural areas. These changes in the labor force brought about significant changes in the labor force participation rate, which increased from 36.9% in 1718 to 40.1% in 1920, and further to 21.6% during 202021 based on usual status. For most of the data, I have uh, used the definition of usual uh, status, but in some cases, I will be referring to uh, uh, current uh, weekly status uh, also. The labor for party, force participation rate for female remained less than half of male uh, 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 labor force participation, though it is showing narrowing down over time due to faster increase in the number of female worker, female labor. The number of female labor is showing much faster increase in rural area compared to urban areas. This has turned rural female labor participation rate 50% higher than urban female labor participation rate. Again, very, uh, I think, uh, important uh, uh, development which we need to uh, understand uh, for its implication. The latest data shows that 57% of men, 25% of women, 
and 42% of all personnel in India are in the labor force. The increase in labor force participation rate reflect the demographic dividend being experienced by India. The second dimension, worker to population rate, as most of you know that uh, uh, everybody in the labor force may not get the job, so uh, we look at uh, worker, those who get the job, and the difference between the two is uh, unemployment. And <coughs> the usual status shows steady increase in number of workers in the country each year after 1718. The increase was 2.7% in 1819, 9.5% in 1920, and 5.3% in year 202021. It may appear strange that number of workers show sizable increase despite the big squeeze in economic activities in the country during PLFS year 1920. Since PLFS data pertain to uh, agriculture year, 1st July to, uh, to, to 30th June. Therefore, the first quarter of year 2021 is included in PLFS year of 1920, so that COVID effect is there. An explanation for this is that many household members who were not in labor force or workforce were forced to join work in family enterprises to counter the adverse effect of COVID on household earnings. This also shows the adaptation mechanism, especially of rural household and women to cope with difficult situation or shock. And again, I will say that women rising to the occasion when there is a distress period and contributing that in terms of incremental more than men. Uh, while rural workforce showed sizable increase each year, urban workforce showed a decline of 2.8% in year 2021. Number of rural workers increased by 32 million each year during 1920 and 2021. The increase was only 5.3 million during 201819. Job creation in urban area was higher than rural area during the pre-COVID year. Number of workers show increase in urban area in the first phase of COVID. However, prolonging of COVID hurt urban employment and many urban workers even moved out of, even moved out to rural areas during 2021, resulting in decline in the number of urban workers in that year. PLFS data shows rising feminization of rural and total workforce in the country. Despite this, female comprise 30% of total workforce in the country and 23% in urban areas. This shows that male dominance in workforce is continuing, though it is diluting or weakening. It is interesting to point out that the number of workers increased at a faster rate than the population and labor force. Very important development. This led to increase in worker to population ratio, which increased from 35% to 41.3% in rural and 33.9% to 36.3% in urban areas. Of a female population of say 1,000 in 1718, 165 were in workforce. This ratio increased to 218 in 1920 and 242 in 2020-21. The third dimension <coughs> is unemployment. During 1718, 29 million persons in the labor force of the country remained without job for a major part of the year. That is based on usual status. Their number declined to 26 million in 1920 and 24.4 million during 2021. But is remarkable is that unemployment declined despite big increase in new entrant into the labor force, which was of the order of 83.5 million between 1718 and 2021. The unemployment rate based on usual status dropped from 6.0% during 1718 to 5.84% during 1819. 
This was followed by a further decline to the level of 4.84% in 1920 and 4.33% in 2020-21. The unemployment rate in a rural area was much lower than urban areas. Similarly, the unemployment rate among rural female was lower than rural male, when the opposite, whereas the opposite hold true in urban areas. The rate of unemployment at country level shows a significant decline every year according to CWS as well since 201718. The fourth dimension, sectoral distribution of uh, uh, workforce, consistent with the theory of structural transformation and past trends. PLFS data also shows a decline in the absolute number and share of workers employed in agriculture in 1819 over 1718. That is pre-COVID years. However, this process got reversed the next year, which witnessed not only a big increase in employment in the agriculture sector, but also an increase in the share of agriculture in the total workforce. This does not surprise me when the economic activity uh, shows that there was a normal kind of growth rate in agriculture, but there was a negative kind of growth in non-agriculture. The total number of jobs in industry and services show an increase even during 1920 and 2021, despite effect of COVID-19 on economic activities. The PLS, PLFS estimate indicate that industry added 4.8 million jobs during 1819 and 3.4 million jobs during 1920. The increase was much higher, 7.6 million during 2021. Similarly, the services sector provided additional employment to 10 million percent during 18, 6 million during 1920, and 2.3 million during 2020-21. So number of jobs offered by industry and services did not decline, but the rate at which they were increasing, that certainly declined. These trends show that employment creation in industry and services continued even during COVID years, but it slowed down significantly. The reversal of the declining trend in the share of agriculture in the workforce during 1920 and 2021 obviously is due to negative growth in industry and services sector which was 26 percent in the last quarter of plfs 1920 which is the first year first quarter of fy 2021 while agriculture continued to follow a decent growth rate of 3.5 percent looking at the gender aspect close to 100 million women worked in the agriculture sector 34.5 million in the services sector and 26.3 million in industry sector, which also include construction. These numbers show that 62.2 percent of all women workers in the country were engaged in agriculture activities, 16 percent in industry and 21.5 percent in the services sector during the latest year, that is 2021. In the case of male workers, 40 percent were employed in agriculture, 27 percent in industry, and one-third in the services sector. It is interesting to note that 63 percent employment in the industry sector and 43 percent in the services sector originated in rural areas. Overall, 74 percent of the workforce belong to uh, rural household and 26 percent to urban household. The agriculture and allied sector provided employment to 40% male workers, 62% female workers, and 46.5% of all workers during 202021. Uh, this number is sometimes confused with the dominance of women in agriculture. Still, male are the dominant worker even in agriculture. Women are not the dominant worker in agriculture, but share of women in agriculture is increasing. Of the 15.8 million additional jobs created in industry between 1718 and 2021, 76% were in the construction sectors. 
the employment data for manufacturing sector shows an increase of only 3.5 million job in the said period further the employment of male worker in manufacturing remained stagnant whereas that of women revealed an increase from 13.2 million to 16.95 million so these are uh, 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 some of the changes uh, uh, another uh, important uh, aspect also related to uh, self employment etc because it has been commented upon between 21 and 18 total employment in the country increased by 18.5% as i already mentioned out of which 73.8% increase happened in self employment 14.2% in casual labor category and 12.1% in regular salary employment within self employment number of helpers in household employment increased by 50% as against only 17% increase in employer of own account enterprise thus it is very clear that covid had not only rendered some regular salaried worker unemployed it also affected quality of self employment covid disruption put pressure on household to start own economic enterprises and involve other family members in a sort of unpaid employment to cope with the pressure of covid on household earnings at overall level 23% of total worker were employed as casual labor labor 55.6% as self employed and 21% were in regular base salary employment within the self employment category there was much higher increase in helper as i already gave that number uh, no need to i think uh, re re uh, repeat this thus it is clear that covid had not only halted growth in quality employment it even rendered some regular salaried workers unemployed covid disruption also put pressure on households to start own economic enterprises and involve other members uh, to cope up with this there is also this uh, agriculture gender uh, uh, kind of things but i will not uh, go into uh, that i will write on that in detail when i contribute uh, paper for uh, publication i now come to some important concluding remarks the four years plfs data covered two pre covid and two covid affected years thus the changes needed to be interpreted with caution rather than drawing sweeping conclusions the available evidence from these four years showed improvement in overall employment situation in the country except some covid related short term distresses however there is no room for complacence we need to give strong push to generate work employ opportunities in non agriculture activities and also create skill oriented blue collar jobs within agriculture out of 100 women who are in the workforce 62 are employed in agriculture and allied activities similarly of 100 women working in agriculture 73% are self employed and only 27% are from agriculture uh, from labor household that <coughs> it is heartening to observe that women employment in all economic activities be it agriculture manufacturing services has increased at a faster rate than men in the last 4 years which include two uh, pre covid year and two uh, covid years this seems to be positive move as no country can become prosperous if work participation rate of women remain low and they remain far behind men i hope this development of increased participation of women in work will accelerate in future plfs data for 202122 and 202223 at all india level will be crucial to confirm this positive change thank you for your intelligence thank you.